Good evening, Camby, and welcome to the Camby Urban Renewal Agency special meeting of February 17th, 2016. Uh, with the indulgence of the agency, I would like to rely on the City Council's opening ceremonies and go ahead and proceed. Sure. Uh, next up, we have the consent agenda. Uh, I move to approve the consent agenda, which includes the minutes from the October 7th, 2015 uh, URA meeting and the minutes from the November 18th, 2015 URA work session. Second. It's been moved by Vice Chair Hudson, seconded by Commissioner Hemsley to approve the consent agenda, which is the minutes of the October 17th, 2015 URA meeting and the minutes from the November 18th, 2015 URA work session. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carry 7-0. Next up, we have citizen input. Do we have any citizens that would like to input? All right, <laughs> seeing none. Uh, Kim, community announcements? We have none. Having none, we'll move on to new business, which is the Canby Urban Renewal District Annual Report. And with that, we'll hand it over to Agency Administrator Rick Robinson. Yeah, I'm looking out at the audience. It looks like I have this on my own. Let's see how quickly I can think on my feet. I was wondering about yeah, that. Yeah, where did Renata end up going? <laughs> well, the good news is I've gone through it four or five times to get it to this point. Uh, the, uh, uh, the city has, uh, the Urban Renewal Agency has a responsibility to file an annual report each year, which uh, summarizes both the activities that have occurred during the previous year and the activities of, that have occurred over the life of uh, the Urban Renewal District. Uh, it provides uh, historic background and, and information relating to uh, uh, Urban Renewal Agencies generally and then very specifically uh, Canby's Urban Renewal District. Uh, this annual report has has a number of highlights for the 2014-15 fiscal year, including, um, and, and I would encourage uh, members of the public and, and others to go to the Urban Renewal uh, website and, and get a copy of this report because it does have some great, uh, come on in. <laughs> it does have some, some uh, uh, great visual appeal and uh, and provides uh, uh, insight and information relating to uh, not only the projects that we've completed in in uh, 2015, 14-15, uh, but also in prior years. Uh, as they're passing out these these uh, reports, I, I'd like to point out to you that uh, this program has been extraordinarily successful for the uh, city of Canby. Not only are we poised over the next several years to uh, uh, accept and support new industry and, and new jobs in the community, but uh, uh, we also have a history and track record of delivering on the, uh, um, the challenge and initiative of bringing new jobs to the community. Um, from the uh, inception of the Urban Renewal District, uh, the uh, assessed value has grown from about 200 million, excuse me, 100 million to about 220 million dollars. So an increase of uh, about 120 million due to development, and that's a substantial number. Uh, we are including uh, this year, as we provided to you at the beginning of. Uh, the last budget cycle, a five-year financial analysis to, to give you insight not only into what we're proposing to uh, spend on projects in in the bud budget year and the most recently completed year, but also to identify how we're going to pay for those projects. Uh, one of the, the initiatives that we, the three of us have been working on is uh, a process under which we're able to describe to you more eloquently, more completely, and more succinctly um, the probability of success in the future of the decisions that you're making today relating to, uh, um, to economic development projects and programs specifically. So if you spend the money today and commit to a project that may have several years of life and that it causes you to incur debt or some financial obligation, uh, we want to show you that in fact you, you have the capacity and the ability to not only meet that new obligation but existing obligations uh, from, from prior years. Um, we uh, have made a commitment, the Urban Renewal Agency, uh, 
based on the actions of its directors in the 2015-16 budget year to the Canby Fire District. And uh, that commitment was one that I viewed as extremely important in uh, uh, fulfilling the commitment that we had made to them, that former councils had made to them a number of years ago. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with Chief, da Chief Davis, the, the uh, uh, Canby Fire Board, in identifying and finding projects that were appropriate, urban renewal, um, fundable projects and then uh, putting in place the funding mechanism which over the course of again looking out four fiscal years will allow us to fully meet the financial commitment that we've made to Canby Fire District. So we're really proud of that and uh, uh, and, and that accomplishment and I also point out that in 2000 1415, the uh, Urban Renewal District did uh, uh, present to the community uh, several sculptures on the First Avenue that are, are beautiful. I was actually walking uh, First Avenue yesterday just to, to take a quick look at them again. They're something worth seeing over and over again. Uh, I'm sure that our, our staff, who are much more knowledgeable than I am on these matters, uh, can fill you in uh, in greater detail than I have. Um, so Rick has um, given a really high-level overview of the report. A lot of the sections you've seen in the past, but um, the viewing public and, and people that are interested in urban renewal can really benefit from backgrounds of the goals, frequently asked questions, how urban renewal works, because it's not an easy concept to understand. We've been around it a while, but the average citizen might not. So we reiterate that. You see some pretty pictures here about Community Park. That's an ongoing contract with Wilderness International. Our investment of 13000 is going a long way in leveraging 22 youths and 36 volunteers to do great work there. So that continues to evolve. Uh, Rick's touched on the public art already. Um, I'm not sure if uh, we talked about the quiet zone yet, but we've made quite a bit of progress on that. Uh, we met with the Federal um, Railway Association and laid out our plans that the city engineers had developed. We discovered a challenge around the turning radius on Elm Street. The It's just not wide enough, so that's the current challenge that we need to get past. We've discovered a solution which would be moving one of the power poles back. Um, it's a reasonable cost. It's just a matter of, o of ODOT finding the money to adjust the turning radius, radius is the way they should be. We're in negotiations with ODOT. We're hoping that that can be resolved. And we have money in the budget to address some of this. It's just taking a little longer than we thought because of this particular issue. And Rick, you might want to add in some new updates yeah, to that. We actually had uh, quite an extensive conversation about that earlier and during the regular uh, city council meeting. So that's okay. been covered very well. Good enough. Um, and Rick already covered the fire district investments. Um, so that's half of the initial um, obligation um, hasn't been negotiated for meaningful improvements on there. And so you see some of the pictures of the work that's um, undergone already. Um, and then, of course, our pride and joy, the, the library civic building. You can see it emerging before your eyes every day. Um, there's the details on that project there. Um, and then as a quick overview, major accomplishments in the district, a Sequoia Parkway extension a couple of years ago, the beautiful First Avenue redevelopment that we keep building on, the police station that uh, we've enjoyed for several years now, um, the industrial park that's going uh, crazy with lots of interest right now. O overall, um, I think we estimated $78 million in assessed value alone in the Pioneer Industrial Park with the new buildings that have been constructed since inception. And um, then we, a lot of road projects that the report goes into on page 11 and 12. Um, then interest, uh, the, the initial focus was on the industrial area. Then we shifted to downtown with um, street straight improvements, entry signage, et cetera, weight park improvements a couple years ago. Um, and then leveraging some investment from the urban renewal district to work with the cinema, attract that to town, and the Andrus building. This year on the facade improvement program, um, the liquor store has a new face looking much better than it did, and Trinity Counseling is actively on its way now. So that's the latest on that. 
And with that, I'll turn it over to Haley to walk through some of the numbers. So um, on page 16, uh, the list of remaining projects looks a little different than it has in the past, um, but it should be familiar to council. It's um, color-coded to kind of correspond to the projection on page 25. And again, the projects have been um, uh, grouped based on that uh, work session that happened last May. So the green projects are projects that we have in process and have committed to. Yellow projects are projects that we're still considering um, that uh, for future consideration. Um, the orange uh, peachish color are projects that were in the original plan that we're no longer considering at this time. And then the like lavender blue at the bottom are other potential opportunities um, that uh, have been identified. So it's color coded, um, and again, you'll see on the projection that the green is what we are going forward with at this time. Um, page 17 looks pretty familiar. Um, key is that the, when urban renewal is formed, there's a maximum indebtedness, ours was 51 million, and we still have about 12 million left of that um, to do any of these potential projects. Um, the debt outstanding looks exactly like it did last year. We have not issued any additional long term debt, and so that payoff period is exactly the same. Um, so with the current payment structures of the debt, they would be paid off in 2036, um, with the earliest we could pay them off due to restrictions and prepayments of 2022. On page 18, um, it looks a little different in that we added the um, assessed value growth. Previously, we've always shown the tax increment um, revenue growth, which is the blue line, but you'll see that they correspond trend-wise. Um, on page 19, we've done payoff point projections again. We've established that the district will be in existence until we're able to fully pay off the debt. And so looking at projections of revenue um, and when that could occur, um, a 5% appears to be is a re conservative estimate. Again, if you look at the averages um, on page 18, um, we've averaged more in the 14% range, but in some years, like 2014, there's only a 2% growth. But the current year, we had a 5% growth right on track with our projections, which you see here. Um, and again, it's conservative. So with these projections, um, the payoff is between 2027 and 2028. Um, the difference in the graphs has to do with um, directly contracted debt and how long you continue operations. Um, so, but you can see, even if we continued operations a little bit farther and went to the maximum indebtedness, the payoff period would be about the same. Um, page 20 is the actual revenue impacts on the different taxing districts. So you freeze the value besides the 3% growth, taxing districts get that, and everything above that goes to URA. This is how they would be allocated if the URA didn't exist. Again, however, you wouldn't have that 120 in assessed value if you hadn't have made the investment. So, um, so keep that in mind as you look at this, but this gives you those numbers by taxing district. And you can compare that to um, page 22, which were the projections and the major taxing districts at the time when the plan was developed. Um, and last year we had added the graph on 20, um, page 21, which just kind of depicts those estimates versus actual in graphic form. If you move to page 23, um, this is a financial summary since inception. Similar to what's been there since we've been doing this report, on page 24, you have last year's actual and this year's budgeted numbers. Um, again, Rick already highlighted some of the projects we have in process. Page 25 is that five-year projection, which the council had seen, but it has been updated for 15 um, actuals. Um, and 15, 16, it says projected instead of budgeted because since we've done the budget, we have some projections in tax revenue and other things that we have incorporated into this. So it's as current as we can make it. And then last page, it highlights the success of in overall of the district, showing that we've had that $120 million in assessed value to the district since inception. Any questions? Mr. Chair, 
uh, the mayor beat you to it by just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, well, here, Al Frank's me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> First off, great report. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I appreciate this report tremendously. And each year, you guys have done a tremendous do job of um, providing the financial fine tuning to it. And I appreciate that immensely. Uh, I, again, want to commend um, this group um, and the history of this agency uh, and the things that we have done and how we've done it. Um, I, you know, I, I look at the public art piece downtown, um, and my wife was an art history major, and so we have. A, I look at art as what is appealing and what I would put in my house, and my wife has a much deeper appreciation and uh, explanation than I do. Um, but I, I think that it was a crucial piece. Those have been crucial pieces to downtown that we've added, and, and um, they have been conversation pieces. Both, I mean, good, bad, and indifferent. They've been conversation pieces, and I appreciate it. The um, fire district piece that we did um, recently, uh, I think, was a, a sound move on our part um, to do that. Um, based on what's here, in terms of, um, we're looking at, you know, the purchase of a new fire engine, a new medical unit, and then uh, remodeling of the fire station to meet pieces that they need. Uh, and I, I think a lesser agreed upon price, shall we say, or involvement. And so um, the, there's a lot of really great things happening. Um, those are my comments. Questions for you guys um, is, so the quiet zone piece is kind of tied to the development aspect of that purchased block. Do we have any updates on where that's at or what is occurring? Um, I've um, reached out twice. Are we talking about the Elm Street development? Yes. I've reached out twice uh, in mid-December and late January, and I have not heard back. We were, uh, the way we left the conversation was to figure out what the maximum building footprint could be based on parking requirements, and we wanted to have an in-depth discussion with the developers to figure that out. So we have yet to schedule that meeting. Okay, and then the other, any other updates in terms of the industrial park? And I know that there's a lot of um, tire kicking and door slamming still, but just um, I've, I talked with Project Borealis yesterday. I'm getting them information tomorrow, so okay. that's good news. Good. Um, I think that um, the project that was looking at the Wygant parcel has gone quiet. Um, they were looking at about 40 acres, so I'm not as hopeful as I was initially about that one. Um, but Blue Ice uh, is the one that would instigate the extension of 4th Avenue. Unfortunately, it's not, not bad. Um, we were going to be going to ODOT tomorrow, but they pushed that meeting out just because their agenda was full with other things now to March. It's still not a problem with the company, so sure. we're all good. Um, it, ODOT has some restrictions on the types of things they can use the immediate opportunity fund for, mm -hmm. which is primarily the road and not some of the infrastructure that we had hoped they would fund. So we are not likely to get the 900,000 that we asked for, but we'll still get a substantial amount. I'm thinking between five and 600,000. Okay. So I've doubled back with um, the state, um, Special Public Works, and they're willing to increase their loan amount. So um, we can still get the project covered and that investment will generate the revenue to repay the loan, it's still a great deal for the city. Absolutely. I mean, the, I think our actual cash dollar investment is around 200000 on a $1.3 million project. It doesn't get a lot better than that. It doesn't. Uh, no. So. Thank you. Well, appreciate it. That's, yeah. Mr. Parker. Well, the mayor said what I said is was going to is that uh, six years ago we when someone would come to us and say what's going on with the urban renewal district, we couldn't hand them this and say here it is all the information you need, why it was formed, what we're doing, and and what the finances are. So uh, twice this last year I've had people come up to me and saying what's 
what's going on with that thing? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to get copies of this and give it to them. So um, th this is excellent staff work. And uh, it, it often when we do something, good and then we continue doing that same thing we don't acknowledge how inadequate it was before and uh, so just because this is as good as last year doesn't mean that you guys haven't worked hard over the over the years to get us there uh, the second thing and, and Tracy I know I don't have four votes for this but I still want to get it on the record okay <laughs> Did I understand you correctly that if we go up to our full indebtedness, it will not change the payoff date? Uh, it will be within one year, yes. Thank you. Um, did you have something to add about the quiet zone comment Brian had had? Or something? I don't know. Oh, uh, no, that's fine. Okay. Because I think we're pursuing that with or without um, the development, but I don't know. And the point of order. Yeah, it just would have. And, and I guess I can go into more detail, but that one of our challenges in the quiet zone in addressing the needs on Elm Street uh, and its connection to First Avenue, both west of Elm and east of Elm, is that First Avenue doesn't line up there. And, uh, and that creates a problem for traffic crossing. It creates a problem for traffic traveling north and south. And the solution that we had developed ties together both the project that we were contemplating between, and thank you for asking that question, between Elm and Douglas, uh, which was the creation of a one-way street to handle the traffic, which would have incidentally allowed us to increase parking capacity on First Avenue, something that's been a request on the books for a long time, um, as well as the uh, so that would be what would happen with, the, with Elm to Douglas, but on Elm Street itself, uh, north and southbound from the railroad tracks, uh, northbound to, uh, to just north of Elm Street, we would put a median so to allow, to prevent that cross traffic that now creates so many problems. Uh, and it would be a, a right turn in only for traffic uh, turning. Uh, mm. uh, it would be westbound on Elm Street, and it would uh, alleviate a lot of the traffic and a lot of the bottleneck and a lot of the concern. Um, of, uh, and it would be a, a lot of concern that's expressed right now relative to our ability to mitigate the overall tramp traffic impact and reduce the risk associated with going quiet on that particular interchange. Okay. Did you have something else? Uh, I, I wanted to ask you what I mentioned about uh, facade improvement. Uh, would it be appropriate to bring that on the table now or do you want to deal with that uh, with the administrator during your yeah. discussions? Okay. Probably a new business item, might not. It, uh, well, just it's just in information for you, Rick. Uh, Commissioner Parker had asked myself and the vice chair if we were willing to engage in a discussion about in perhaps enhancing the facade improvement program to cover, <laughs> so to speak, reverse facades in particular areas like the Hallway Mall parking area and behind the credit union because they're so highly visible and have a definite cosmetic effect on the attractiveness of the downtown. And we both concur that would be a, a good discussion to have. Yeah, I think it's ready. a good discussion. I, I think that there's some, some potential. We do have facade improvement funds budgeted in our projections as well. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the values of doing long-term planning. Uh, so it's not a program that we're anticipating, and it's at the highest priority. Would we'll be here today and not here tomorrow. So, so the funds exist, and and uh, you as a, as the commissioners get to d define, the directors get to define how you would choose to allocate those funds and re reverse facade improvements have a def definite place, particularly given the high visibility on Second Avenue of in. in only using it as an example and not the reason um, of the Holly Mall. I would also add, I think, too, I think the conversation wasn't just Holly Mall, but also down by that parking lot by um, Bow Stop. 
yeah. Graham building, CTV Graham building and CTV, and 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 wave and CTV back in there, so I would. Okay. And yeah. we're going to be using that area more for civic events and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So I just, when we first set up the facade program, the idea we were thinking about First Avenue, and. Um, and I've had uh, uh, property owners at, at both locations, Pappy's and, and uh, uh, Pudding River, and asking about it. And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to the agency and see if that's something that's uh, worthy of discussion, at least. Yeah, I think we can, we can define a, a program. Uh, now, I wouldn't envision, at least in the early stages, until we know we have the resources to support it, I wouldn't envision increasing the overall budget that we've established no, for facade improvements, no, which is 25000 But it still gives us a tremendous opportunities to to begin to uh, to improve, uh, what's called reverse? What is yeah, that reverse facade? Backdoor facade. facade. <laughs> Backdoor facade. Back door facade. Yeah. I like that. But, uh, yeah. I think it's a, a fascinating idea. It's within the urban renewal area, and so it's certainly uh, something that we should we should uh, have further conversations and maybe uh, work with staff to define a, uh, a program that could support. And and Tim to uh, further define that on on what a reverse facade. I think that that's your nomenclature. Yeah, but yeah. but on, on Second Avenue, for example, where uh, we have uh, Holly Mall going in, and then we have several businesses with entrances onto that parking lot. Mm -hmm. That that in my mind, that's as as, as visible and public. As First Avenue, yeah. and we so for have two facades. The, it, essentially, you have have a facade no, on no. the front and back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I wouldn't right. I wouldn't advocate an, an increase in the funding on it. But there have been years where we have not utilized all mm -hmm. of those funds. So. So, Rick, uh, if there's any staff diligence to be done, and in particular if there's uh, language that needs to be changed, can you go ahead and cite that on the agenda mm -hmm. for wherever you feel appropriate? Absolutely. Thanks. And, yeah, and we have actually fairly substantial budgets established for facade improvement programs. Right. Um, this, we are anticipating an application from the Kiwanis mm -hmm. uh, this year. That's the only one that, that we will be hopefully bringing to you soon. Very good. Does that meet the spirit? Thanks. Thank you. You nailed it. All righty. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, sir. Two, two more uh, questions in, in terms of uh, space inquiries. Any movement on the old Clackamas Federal Credit Union building? Uh, I've, I've not heard anything on that. I'm sorry. Okay. No. And then uh, the spot where the pawn shop was, or maybe okay. currently is, but they are moving. They and they're out. They moved to yeah, Santa Cruz. Yeah. Is that a? I don't know. I'm not even. I haven't heard anything can, either. Okay. Mm -hmm. no. right. That was all that I had, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for the ladies tonight? Thank Excellent you. report Thank as always. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. Very, very much. Thank you for uh, bailing me out on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Administrator, do we have any other new business to conduct tonight? I know we do not. Uh, we do have an executive session, however, correct? Yes, we do. I uh, move that we go into executive session under ORS 192.660, parent 2, parent E, real property. And is there a second? Second. Uh, it's been moved by Vice Chair Hodson, seconded by Commissioner Hensley to go into executive session pursuant to ORS 192.660. Parent 2, Parent E, Real Property. If you'll bear with me for a few minutes here, I'll read the language for that. The Urban Renewal Agency will now recess this meeting to meet in executive session for the purpose of discussing real property. The executive session is held pursuant to ORS 192.660, Parent 2, Parent E, which allows the agency to meet in executive session to discuss those topics. Only representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. The agency will adjourn to the City Hall Conference Room to hold its executive session. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision may be made in executive session. At the end of the session, we may reconvene the meeting in the City Hall Conference Room and conduct any further business that needs to be taken care of. Kim, do we need a motion to recess or just declare? 
need a motion. All right, need a motion so to moved. recess to executive session. So moved. Uh, second. 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 No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 And we now go to executive session in the conference room. Good night, Camby. Thank you. Thanks.